Hello. Do you grow tomatoes? Do you keep a record of how many tomatoes you get off each plant? You don't. I don't normally either. No, I don't normally. We just take them. Uh, but this year is different. This year is different because I'm conducting a small trial. So I really need to know how many tomatoes each of these plants have delivered. And that might give us a, a steer as to which way we want to grow the tomato plants next year. Yep, I've grown tomato plants this year in buckets as usual. But I've also grown tomato plants this year in bags. And that isn't usual. And this isn't usual. And I probably won't do this again. But I've done it this year to keep a record, a true record, so that I don't mistake my imagination for my memory. This is a true record of how many tomatoes each of those plants, be it in a bucket, be it in a bag, has delivered this year. I'm going to cut you to some video that I shot through the year of me taking tomatoes from the vine and topping up these pebbleometers. Then when you come back, we're going to empty these pebbleometers and we're going to do a reckoning. Is that a deal? Okay, see you when you come back. It's the middle of summer here at homegrown veg in the United Kingdom. And this is my 8 foot by 6 foot polycarbonate greenhouse. I've got tomatoes growing down both sides of it. And at the far end, I've got a couple of cucumbers growing. The tomatoes and the cucumbers are part of my which is best. Grow vegetables in buckets, grow vegetables in bags series. And as you can see, each one has a pebbleometer pegged to the container, pegged to the bucket, pegged to the bag. And I have six varieties of tomatoes growing in this greenhouse. Two of each variety, one growing in a bucket and one growing in a bag. And the intention was to use the pebbleometers to keep a count of how many tomatoes each plant delivers and then perhaps make a judgment which is best, buckets or bags. Uh, so we'll have Shirley versus Shirley. We'll have Big Daddy versus Big Daddy. Uh, and that's the way we'll do it. But I've got to say at this point that the buckets and the bags are performing equally. The plants are as tall as one another, they look as healthy as one another, they seem to be producing as many trusses as one another and as many tomatoes as one another. So at this point in time there doesn't seem to be a difference. In other words, one isn't better than the other at this point in time. But that might not be the case at the end of the season. And the only way to find that out is to stick with this trial. This is one of those big beefsteak tomatoes. It's a variety called Heinz 1350. As you can see it is starting to ripen on the vine. We're going to take that big one off now to continue to ripen indoors. I've made a decision, I'm going to do it. Right, let's take this guy indoors. Shirley growing in a bucket.
Big Daddy growing in a bag. Shirley growing in a bag. Pines 1350 growing in a bucket. Sun gold.
Moon Gall growing in a bag. I think you'll agree, this is a good return isn't it? This is a good return. We're at the height of the tomato picking season at the moment, so I must tell you that this wouldn't be typical, but at its best, this is what you can expect to be taking off 12 tomato plants in a greenhouse, in your garden, at home. This is what I've harvested over the last few days and on this table there will be examples of uh, Crimson Crush, Sun Gold, easily recognisable, Sun Gold, Crimson Crush, uh, Ains 1350, I think these might be Crimson Crush actually, uh, these are Ceres, these didn't do so well, there's some Big Daddy back here. Yeah? Um, and there's some Shirley. So yeah, we're happy with what we've achieved this year. Still with us? Okay, before we start the count, let me just show you the runners and riders. Okay, I think you could see from that that we have two cherry tomatoes, we have two standard size tomatoes, the, the, the size of a tomato you would usually buy in a grocery store, and we have two beefsteak tomatoes. Okay, so we have a fair uh, cross section, don't we? We're going to start with the cherry type tomatoes, and we're going to start with Cerise. Okay, so this is Cerise in a bucket and this is Cerise in a bag. Let's check the bucket first. That's Cerise in the bucket. Cerise in the bag. fairly even Stephen doesn't it um, and that's because it is uh, what we actually got was we got um, 62 tomatoes in the bucket 
and 66 tomatoes in the bag. So there isn't a great deal of difference there, is there? Um, and so that wouldn't persuade me one way or the other. Go with bags or go with buckets. I think one is as good as the other in terms of how we can uh, su support a tomato plant. Okay, so 62 cerise in the bucket, 66 cerise in the bag, small cherry tomatoes, probably about, how big, let me find a pebble, probably about that size. Okay, let's tidy these off and we'll go with the other cherry tomato, which is sun gold. Now I've grown cerise before, but I've never grown sun gold before. And I grew sun gold because it had a great reputation for flavour. Let me tell you, it didn't disappoint. Wow, sun gold is absolutely gorgeous, straight off the vine. It really is. I mean, I've given quite a few of these away to neighbours and family, and they've all said, what was that tomato? It was gorgeous. Um, so if you're looking for a variety to try next year, if you've never grown sun gold before, um, I'll recommend it. If you have grown sun gold before, you'll know all about it. Okay, so, so this is sun gold. I've got so many tomatoes on these two plants, I actually thought we would overflow the pebbleometers. I don't know if you can tell, but let me get a pebble out of here and one out of this, this one over here. Let me have a look. I don't know if you noticed, but the pebbles have got significantly smaller and they've had to get smaller uh, because I was going to overflow the uh, pebbleometers. I got so much fruit off these two plants, sun gold. Right, let's do sun gold in the bucket. Wow, that's a lot of tomatoes, isn't it? And sun gold in the bag. Hey, that's a lot of tomatoes. That is a lot of tomatoes. And they tasted absolutely gorgeous. Right, what's the scores on the doors? Well, sun gold in the bucket produced 103 tomatoes, sun gold in the bag produced 111. Again, too close to call really. You would be happy with that, you would be happy with that. Neither the bag nor the book are disappointed. Um, and so, based on the two we've just looked at, I don't think I would recommend one being better than the other. What do you think? What do you think? I'll tell you what I did like about the bags. Uh, one thing I didn't, uh, I didn't realise and I didn't expect, and it's never been mentioned uh, on any other videos that I've watched, is that we know the bags are breathable, okay, because they talk about air pruning. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. Um, but one thing you, you find when you're growing in, let's go with buckets first. One thing you find when you're growing in buckets is, you never know if you've added enough water. You look at the bucket and it looks wet. And you think, yeah, but is that just the top of the bucket? Am I watering from the bottom? Is there enough water in there? Um, watering is always an issue when you're growing a container, a bucket or a bag. What I found with the bags is, because the fabric's breathable, when you water the bag, uh, it actually seeps through the sides of the bag. The sides of the bag can become wet. And so, if you want to know if there's enough moisture in that bag, you can actually feel the sides of the bag near the bottom. And if the sides of the bag feel wet, then there's, there's moisture in the soil in the bag. You can't do that with a bucket. You can't, but you can with a bag. And if you feel the sides of the bag and the sides of the bag are dry, chances are the bag's drying out. 
you need to give it some water uh, but if it's wet you know there's moisture in there you may want to give it some more but at least you know it isn't dry right where are we going next let's go for Shirley yep Shirley's a, a medium sized tomato let's see if we can find the pebble on it here yep Shirley in the bag there we are here we go Shirley in the bucket okay we'll do the bag first <laughs> not as many tomatoes as the cherry types but probably a similar weight if we're weighing them as you can see we're going for bigger pebbles now because we didn't need as many and we wouldn't overflow the pebbleometer okay so Shirley in the bag Shirley in the bucket what's the scores on the doors Shirley in the bag 39 Shirley in the bucket 34 it's close again isn't it it's close again and this takes no account in, incidentally of how big those tomatoes were there might have been fewer on this vine but slightly bigger than the ones on this vine so it's just a bit of a, a, an indicator, a rough guide as to uh, what you might expect if you're growing a bucket in a bag and, and what difference there might be right so that's Shirley and I've got to tell you Shirley is a variety that's been grown over a number of years in the United Kingdom and it's a firm favourite with gardeners uh, and it doesn't usually disappoint and the fruits, the tomatoes tend to be uniform in size nice round red tomatoes so that's Shirley and that's one of the standard sized tomatoes that you would probably buy in a shop Okay, uh, where are we at now? What are we going with now? We're going with Crimson Crush. Again, uh, a standard sized tomato if there is such a thing. Let's see what we've got in the bag. Let's see what we've got in the bucket. Okay, so this is Crimson Crush. Now Crimson Crush is advertised as being one of the most blight resistant tomatoes on the market. I haven't had blight so I can't uh, recommend it as a blight resistant tomato because it's never resisted blight for me. I didn't get blight. If I'd got blight and Crimson Crush hadn't been blighted then I would tell you that uh, and, and there would be some proof if you like some practical proof uh, but as I say I never got blight uh, so I don't know that just how blight resistant Crimson Crush is anyway what's the accounting what what have we got here let's have a look okay so Crimson Crush in the bag delivered 20 Crimson Crush in the bucket delivered 26 would that make you decide one way or another it wouldn't me. No, it wouldn't. I think we're still level pegging here. Yeah? Anyway, so that's Crimson Crush. 20 in the bag, 26 in the bucket. Only two to go, you'd be pleased to know. And the two to go are the two beef steaks. That's Heinz 1350 and Big Daddy. Now I've grown neither of these two before. Okay. So this is a first for me. Which one are we going with? We'll go with Heinz 1350. Let's see, where's it at? Heinz 1350. Okay. Heinz 1350 in the bag. Not as many again. Heinz 1350 in the bucket. But you would expect this, wouldn't you? We've just moved from a standard sized tomato to a beef steak tomato. So you get fewer tomatoes but bigger. I think you knew that, didn't you? Yeah, you knew that. Okay, so what's the uh, scores on the doors? 
Well, Owens 1350 in the bug delivered 11. Owens 1350 in the bucket delivered 13. Not a lot in it, is there? Not a, not a lot in it at all. But big fine tomatoes, it's got to be said. Big fine tomatoes, yeah. Owens 13.50, so we're happy with those. And those were the beef steaks. And the last one we're going to do is Big Daddy. OK, here we go. Where's he at? Big Daddy. Yeah, there he is. So we'll go with Big Daddy in the bag first and Big Daddy in the bucket. The bin is in the shot. There you go. So how many have we got? Well I'm making it Big Daddy in the bag 9 and Big Daddy in the bucket 11. But this is just a, a small sample, isn't it? This, this might not be totally uh, representative of how, you would, how this would turn out if you grew hundreds of these plants in bags and hundreds of these plants in buckets. But I've only got, I've only got an 8 6 greenhouse. And actually what I was looking for was the bags to win by a mile. And then I would be growing in bags. Or the buckets to win by a mile. And then I'd be growing in buckets. But the both winners, as far as I can see, it's a dead heat. It's, it's just too close to call. I mean, that's what I think. What do you think? What do you think? Have you enjoyed this? It's been a bit of a long road at times, but I've quite enjoyed doing it. And um, I've quite enjoyed this count because... I was looking to get a result. I was looking to get a result. <laughs> if a draw is a result, then I've got a result. But you may see it differently. You may see it differently. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've enjoyed making it. It's been a long haul, but we've got there eventually. And you've got to the end of the video with me, so hey, thanks for staying with it. This is homegrown veg. Signing out.